welcome aboard November 147 Bravo Romeo. Today we're going to demonstrate on-speed maneuvering during different phases of flight. So let's spend just a few minutes with the autopilot engaged and explain what we mean by the term on-speed. The easiest way to think of on-speed is it's the optimum angle of attack for maneuvering an approach to landing. So you're already used to flying on speed, whether you think of it in those terms or not, because it's what you do every time you fly an approach and land your airplane. Now, what's so neat about on speed angle of attack is it's always the same, regardless of weight, bank angle, density, altitude, or G-load. Flying on speed does require that you have a calibrated AOA system in the airplane. And on speed angle of attack is about 9 to 10 degrees actual angle of attack in our demonstration RV4. And this corresponds to 1.3 times the stall speed, which at 1G is equal to that V ref you're familiar with for approach and landing. On speed occurs when the wing is producing about 60% of its lift capacity, which is optimum for sustained turn performance. An optimum sustained turn is really just a fancy way of saying that you're turning the airplane as efficiently as possible for a given energy state. But here's the key concept. If we maintain on-speed angle of attack, the airspeed is going to automatically vary as required when we maneuver the airplane, and that really helps simplify energy management. To demonstrate angle of attack maneuvering during the different phases of flight, we fitted this RV4 with an oral system that allows you to hear the AOA tone once the airplane slows down. Now the tone allows you to effectively listen to the back side of the drag curve, and that's shown in the upper right-hand corner of this chart. In our straight wing propeller driven airplane, you can see that on speed is about halfway between LRD Max and the stall on the back side of the drag curve. Now the tone logic itself is shown in the lower part of the chart, and I'm describing the chart from right to left. So as I slow down to LRD Max, you're going to start to hear a low frequency beep. Now as the speed decreases and the AOA increases, that beeping is going to become more rapid until on speed, at which point the tone will become steady. Now if we continue to slow down, that tone pitch is going to change to a high frequency and start beeping again. At 15% above the stall, we're going to get a stall warning that works just like the way stall warning does in other airplanes that you've flown. But during our demonstrations, we're going to refer to the low pitch beeping tone as the fast tone. The high pitch beeping tone is the slow tone. And the steady tone is on speed. Now this simple logic lets us use AOA feedback to help control our pitch. Easy to make small pitch inputs to adjust the AOA between on speed, slightly fast, or slightly slow to optimize performance. And it also allows me to hear any performance trends. So relax, strap into a comfortable chair, and let's explore on speed maneuvering. For the first demonstration, we're just going to show you what the basic tone sounds like. So we'll decelerate the airplane in a level flight. As we approach L over D max, we're going to start to hear that low frequency beep. And as the airplane decelerates and slows down, the pulse rate is going to increase. Until on speed, when the tone goes steady. If we continue to slow down, going to get the high frequency slow tone, and those beeps will increase until we approach the stall. Now let's just go ahead and maintain on speed for a little while, and maneuver the airplane, and show you how the tone behaves. So right now our indicated airspeed is 75 miles per hour. But if we put a little bit of bank in, and we fail to relax the back pressure, note that the airplane starts to decelerate and get slow. However, if I relax the back pressure, we return to an on-speed condition. Now let's increase the bank, and watch what happens to the indicated airspeed as we maintain a constant AOA. Notice that the indicated airspeed is increased 95 miles per hour, and yet we're maintaining an on-speed condition. If we take the bank out, we see we're immediately fast, and that makes perfect sense.
Maximum ranged light condition is going to occur at L over D max. That's going to correspond to the start of the fast tone. So if we lose the engine, I want to establish a maximum range glide condition. We'll just fly the airplane to the start of the fast tone and trim it up. On the other hand, if we want to establish a maximum endurance glide condition, we'll slow the airplane to on speed. Now one thing to keep in mind, Anytime we bank the airplane, if we have to make a turn after you lose the engine, if you fail to relax the back pressure, notice we're immediately slow. So that tone reminds me I've got to relax the back pressure to maintain an on-speed condition. And notice what happens to the indicated airspeed. And again, slowing down as we roll out on speed. G on the airplane and see how it behaves. You notice we're immediately in a slow condition. So even in a 2G condition, I know what my indicated airspeed is for slightly slow and on speed. Now let's put a little more G on the airplane. to the indicated airspeed. As I approach three Gs, on speed, continues to increase in terms of indicated airspeed. Three and a half Gs, I'm at about 125 indicated. Take a look at a maximum performance purely vertical turn. So we're going to fly a simple loop today. We'll start at 5,000 indicated, 170 miles per hour. We'll make a smooth 3G pull. We'll capture on speed and fly it around the top of the loop and then look at our exit parameters. Smooth 3G pull. So we finished about 200 feet higher and about 20 miles an hour slower. But if you recall, altitude plus airspeed equals energy. So what that tells us is we finished with the same amount of energy we started. We were just more efficient to get the airplane over the top of the loop, which means that we were optimizing our turn performance. A little bit different than a normal aerobatic loop where you want your entry parameters to equal your exit parameters, but a great example of what on-speed maneuvering can do for your turn rate and radius management. One thing that tends to get folks into trouble in RVs is how fast they accelerate when they're going downhill. And if they're upside down going downhill, they accelerate particularly quickly. That's because your weight, your lift, and your thrust are all acting together to pull the airplane down towards the planet. And that's an awful lot of thrust. It'd be well in excess of 2,000 pounds. So the airplane is going to accelerate very, very rapidly. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Airplane's 90 degrees nose low. Notice how fast the indicated airspeed increases. If we're lazy with the pull, it'll increase rapidly right up to dangerous levels. Right now, I've got well in excess of 10 Gs available if I was to snatch the stick. Now let's take the airplane up, do that again on speed, and take a look at how our airspeed behaves. Now this time we're going to recover on speed, so we're going to just slow the airplane down to on speed, roll inverted, and maintain on speed all the way through the inner recovery. Now notice, we finished at maneuvering speed. So we didn't exceed any airspeed parameters, we didn't exceed any G limits, and we were very efficient at rating the nose through that recovery. And that is why on-speed maneuvering is so simple and so effective. Find the on-speed traffic pattern, and any RV is very straightforward.
One of the nice features of the tone system is the start of that fast tone at L over D max corresponds nicely to flap extension speed. Suppose I stabilize the airplane on a downwind, about the time I start to hear that tone, I go ahead and select 20 degrees of flaps, adjust my trim, continue to slow to down on speed, and complete my landing checks. As we achieve an on-speed condition, we'll trim the airplane up and select our landing configuration flaps, which today is going to be 40 degrees, and monitor our touchdown point. About the time I'm looking over at my left shoulder at the touchdown zone, I'll go ahead and select idle power. Allow the airplane to stabilize momentarily in a descent, retrim. and start the base turn. Now the technique I'm using to fly the base turn is pitch to control my angle of attack and the feedback I get from the tone, power to control my glide slope, and bank angle to control my ground track. My objective is to roll out on a stabilized final no later than a thousand feet prior to touchdown, and I've picked out a visual reference point on the extended runway center line to help me with that. Nice feature of the tone system is I don't have to look inside the cockpit to get my AOA feedback, so that frees up my eyes for looking around the traffic pattern. We'll just continue to maintain an on-speed condition until we roll out on final approach. But I expect I'll have to make a small pitch and power adjustment to stabilize the airplane in the groove. an on-speed condition all the way until just prior to touchdown. We're going to transition to that slow tone for landing. And if it's a true three-pointer, we'll actually land in the stall tone as we roll the wheels onto the ground. Descent rate maintaining on speed. Recapture the glide path, adjust power, maintain on speed. Thank <laughs> you. 
And since we're accelerating, we'll actually hear the slow tone first. And then on speed. That initial climb at on speed gave us best climb angle. Now we'll let the airplane accelerate to L over D max, which will produce best climb rate. And our climb rate stabilizing just under 2,000 feet a minute today.